Yo, I'm Matt Forio, and this is Chisel This. Hi, I'm Cam Steady. This is Matt Forio. The man who brings the community together, Cam Steady, Pikachu Eevee. What's up, bro? I I am both Pikachu and Eevee, and if you do not refer to me as such on Twitter, my Twitter handle is now at Pikachu Eevee. Uh, if you do not refer to me as such, then uh, consider yourself blocked. He is also the founder of Nerdcore. I did create Nerdcore, yes. Uh, there's a picture of me and Soldier Boy as we're deliberating on how Nerdcore should work. So, yes, this is 100% facts. And he is the only Nerdcore artist. I am the only Nerdcore artist, although I do like to reach out to some other people to bring them in on what I'm doing. But in terms of Nerdcore, I am the only one. And one of the ways that he does this is by creating Pokemon Rap Ciphers. And this all started sometime last year. I think we had the idea, or I guess you had the idea, to create the Eevee Evolutions Rap Cipher. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, I did the Eevees first. And it was supposed to be kind of just like a one-off thing. The channel name was still Video Game Rap Battles at the time. And those were just so much more fun to make musically compared to I've been doing the rap battles for so long. And so then that did so well that I did another one that was the trainers and then it just kept going on and on and on and now that's become a staple of the channel. I just I remember you approaching me with that idea and I just thought it was so cool and then we decided to apply trainers to it and then that just blew up and this became something that you're known for now, something that people are excited for. It's a community event. It's the zeitgeist. It's everything, you know? No, I'm very, very grateful with how it turned out because it really helped me transition from the rap battle pocket into the greater nerdcore music scene. This was kind of the launch pad that allowed me to do that and solidify Cam Steady as a name versus just the brand of video game rap battles. And of course, there's going to be many people in the comment section who are gonna say, Cam, you're burning out on these ciphers, you're doing too many, but you want to keep it fresh. And so your latest idea was the most recent video that we uploaded. So tell me how you came up with that. Yeah, I've always, from the very beginning, I'd be getting messages about doing the starters cipher. And I thought of a couple different ways to do it. Oh, am I gonna get 25 people on this? Like, how do I do it? And people have done the 20 person ciphers, but personally, uh, it's so easy for a cipher of, that size to get stale and lack coherency because there's so many different styles and trying to switch up the beat to like fit all of those individual people and i tried different ideas but having each person represent a trio gives them a lot more to rap about because imagine if like every single person was rapping as a different starter how many repeat bars there would be like oh i am you know, if somebody's doing Infernape, they're like, haha, I hit you with a fire punch. And like, there's like three other Pokemon that fit that. Whereas giving you the trio, there's so much more lore with the three evolution lines. There's nine Pokemon to work with, different abilities, uh, anime lore and stuff like that. It's It was much easier for everybody to have a diverse, unique verse rather than just 25, you know, kind of throwaway verses. And you know, that was one of the comments I read was, why didn't you do a cipher for all the fire starters, all the water starters, and all the grass starters? And then just think how many spit fire bars you would have in the same cipher. There, there'd be yeah, no. Yeah, it's it. It'd be like, what do you what do you rap about? For obviously they have their own lore and stuff like that, but it becomes so niche. That's like who's you know if you have to dive into the development of Pig Knight's design in order to you know like get a unique bar across, nobody's gonna get it. So here we can still have universally appealing bars, but at the same time, uh, they can focus on uniqueness without alienating people. So the way that it works out, it's typically a month in advance that Cam is getting us the information. He's choosing who's going to re represent each generation or person, and he gives us a very plain beat. And he says, have fun with it, right? Meddling with ultimate weapons, folks are surrendering the French way. Can't defend you, can they get defended? Can you best play? 3D phase, making 4D plays in this game like a chess clear checkmate. Lick spitting like a Greninja with the slippers. Come and equip with this Ninjutsu, making a princess want to kiss that you don't need. And uh, typically the way it works yep. is you give us a month, and uh, I don't always use that whole month, do I? <laughs> no. No, it's, it's usually a day for Matt for you. <laughs> because as soon as I get the assignment, all the gears start turning. You know, I, I just, I'm thinking mm -hmm. of all these different elements and I want to get into the character. I pop open my 3DS and I go back and I revisit the game and I'm thinking about 
what was the, the culture of that time period of the of the starters. Yep. We're going to get into that once we get to my verse, but of course there's five before that and a few after as well that we're going to have to really sink our teeth into and react to. So let's take a listen. Check it. They saying I'm a Gen 1-er. Funny, cause they know Gen has ever been funner. The best colors, red and blue. The best covers, best starters, best stutters, best megas, best numbers. The single digits get the party started. But party's heartless, your party's garbage. Can pick the parts and try the carcass. But bars the hardest, the char is artist. Compared to every other fire starter, you could never think of Star Wars. Don't need to park it. These other Gens are weak for sure. They'll never ever be elite enough to beat the four. They try to beef with my trio, they'll meet my Venus or Hit them with that solar beam, then I make them beat the floor. They'll need support, they'll probably have to ask Troy. Hey, can you heal our balls? We made a bad choice. You knew that ass would get handed, you lose the trash that I'm bagging, I'll shoot your ass with the cannons, now meet my past toys. Alright, that was Generation 1, ShoeTube. Cam, what do you think about his verse? I love ShoeTube. I've known of Shoe and interacted with him since like 2012 or something like that, 2013. Um, and he's always had this kind of Midwest, Eminem, internal rhyme scheme flow. And I really wanted to tap into him because... I always love the stuff he brings, especially to Generation 1 style Pokemon raps. Uh, you know, nothing crazy in terms of bars, but just the skill in the writing of displaying, like, working in the words Charizard, Venusaur, uh, Solar Beam, uh, and keeping the rhyme scheme so consistent is such a skill. And finding ways to sprinkle in, as you'll see elements of the instrumentals from the game it's challenging because we don't want to just do full-blown samples from the game and create a new beat from scratch we want to intertwine it into the existing beat which sometimes creates a challenge but uh it, especially just the gen one main theme just works so well with those trumpet stabs we had a pretty pretty talented person uh, at the helm for that assignment right yeah, yeah. So Glitch City always provides the stems for the Pokemon remixes, and I, I always make her go in and adjust it and stuff like that because it's such trial and error to make it sound good. Uh, sometimes I feel like literally there was parts when mixing this one where it's like, I don't think it's going to end up sounding good when we're doing the Pokemon remix. I was exploring other options, but, you know, we just kept throwing stuff at the wall. Eventually something stuck, and uh, Freshy can now played a big role in taking what glitch provided and then finding the proper way to chop it up so it will fit the sound because glitch provides us with like five times more music than we actually need and we just take the parts that we think will sound good and intertwine those that's what happens when you involve legends right <laughs> yeah yeah no she's amazing i love her music i love how shootube really personifies this image that I have in my head of what a Gen 1-er is, right? It's somebody who's probably yeah, slightly yeah. older than me, you know, maybe the, the schoolyard bully, perhaps, the, the kids a couple of grades <laughs> above you, um, who, who play Pokemon first before you. And even though, um, like, you yourself might be a bigger fan of the franchise, there's just, like, there's just some arrogance about, no, Generation 1 is, of course, the best. Like, there's no question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you ask why, it's just because. That's the answer. So uh, uh -huh. he really personifies that. Even, even some of the crude language, like you're going to eat the floor and, hey, can you heal our balls? And, you know, you losers are trash. Like it's yeah. just a very common right on character. Like, you know, these, these other ones are garbage. Your party's garbage. Your we made a bad choice. So it, it was fun for him. It really is just kind of like the bully. Like, I uh, like, haha, -ha, like boys rule, girls drool. Like literally that type of, that type of energy. All right, we're going to get into Gen 2. This is a newcomer to your Cypher scene, but of course not the Pokemon rap scene Definitely. as a whole. Six seconds. Yep. Suicune himself mm -hmm. representing nothing else than Gen 2. Here we go. Yes, sir. The God Shizzy. With a drip, that's that water. And I'm full of holes like Crocs from your fault. I alter your face. Boy, you know my style. Dumb to talk with a big jaw like Toda Dial. Easy target. Try to play me. Hit your heart by your Chikorita. And you gon' see your Bailey rolling in a make him be green. Meganium, the sweet smell coming off the flower. Be the craziest. A lot of y'all speak heat. But mine smoke and shoot. I send big fire back like top flosion. I'm coasting big chopper. Everything I speak proper. Every word coming out the mother. Quit lava, you shorty got low evasion, she ain't hard to hit. She want a journey, I show her these balls as a starter kit. On stream, make a stream while you quiver, cause you watching from a window like silver. All right, when I first heard this verse, I just like started busting out 
laughing because I loved it so much and there's so many punctual yeah. moments. And you uh -huh. guys on the beat, you do a lot to emphasize them as well, especially the Quill Lava Bar is just my favorite. Yeah, it's, yeah, the beat cut, yeah. <laughs> one of my favorite lines in the entire cypher. Um, he, he's got so many uh, themes. He, he establishes uh, little, little tiny pocket universes of language in his uh, rap. So he starts out at the very beginning and he says, gators drip water holes crocs yeah the, the crocs bar is hilarious he does this thing with chikorita's entire evolution line so he goes just one couplet where he name drops all three of them and I, I i love his doubles and stuff like that and the way he rides the beat with the big horns coming in in the background is one of my favorite moments in the entire cypher just his verse as a whole sonically and what he's doing and the bars there are just so funny i love like yeah chikoria your bay would leave you know his flow is really dominant i think the flow is, is the primary thing that you are hearing when you listen to his verse uh because he's just going straight through and we were talking about this the other day cam it's like you know uh, six seconds doesn't even use any backup vocals he's just that really cold nah, stone yeah. Um, in your ear type of rapper and he's going to let his voice speak for mm -hmm. itself and yeah you get that straight through on the first listen and then when you go back you catch these really clever moments where he says i send big fire back like typhlosion he's not just saying yeah fire yeah. because of typhlosion he said fire back typhlosion has fire yeah, on his yeah. back so you're, you're yeah getting yeah all it's some people will get on the first listen, but people who are just vibing out to the music, not really paying too much attention to the lyrics, will just be like, okay, cool, Typhlosion Firebar. You're like, oh, no, he's talking about the biology of Typhlosion. Yeah. And that's a successful cipher because you, you get the enjoyment of being able to, to coast on a song, and then you also get to dig into it a little bit more after the fact. The key component of wordplay that I like here is when he says, on stream, I have you watching from a window. So think about like a yeah. computer right? Computers are yeah. composed of windows. And when you're streaming, yeah. your face is captured in a little box. So that's like a window. That's the window you're watching through. Yep. Yeah. And of course, ties or like right a back Windows into computer the, either. Yeah. Yeah. Ties right into the, the gameplay of Silver uh -huh. at the beginning of the story. See him through the window. Yeah. No, he's insanely smart with it. All right, cool. We're going to watch Gen 3, uh, Gen 3 verse right now. If you messing with gang, liable to get gone. Switch lane speed, boost when my fire kicks on. We might leave you in the mud. Clips get drawn. Big stick, big arms. Make a stone in my palm. Cause I'm touring. With too much tree in my stash. I'm a floor ass. 151 my dash. I'm a floor ass. Big tree. Yo, s weak like floor jazz. I don't need fly. Kick high. I'm sorry. Watch my tone and watch how I'm stepping. So much drip, but I'm grinding while I'm flexing. Guess that means that all that electric won't even bleed a drop out my message. Where I stay, FL, like hell, get hot, but the weather too wild. Big step, marsh time, when I pick seven tile, watch him leave when he drop. Couple leaves like blaze, leave him clean when we crop down. The end of that verse is one of my favorite parts of the cypher. His rhythm at the end there is so cool. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I get that stuck in my head all the mm -hmm. time. Yeah, and he's got that really cold Florida style, like some artists like Danny Towers will really do this, uh, like stripped back, like kind of just bouncing on the beat, but really just the watch my tongue and watch how I'm stepping. Dun, 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 but dun, and I'm like it, the all of the sauce is in that, you know, the subtlety of the delivery, but the flow also goes crazy. Uh, lots of great references in terms of what he's bringing in terms of like, oh, the high jump kick, the big step more stop. Um, I'm grounded. Well, I'm so much strip, but I'm grounded. So like the Swampert and uh, the Skeptile references. But at the end of the day, he's saying like, I got drip and I got weed. Did you just say Skeptile? I said Skeptile. Okay. <laughs> you brought me back to third grade for a second because we used to fight I, I, about I that. Think. <laughs> No, I say, I say Sceptile for sure. Sceptile. Sceptile references. Uh, obviously, Generation 3 is my favorite, and uh, I know that I can't represent it every time, so I have to rely on other people yeah. to do so, and he did yeah. it very well, I must say. He he's brings that... I think Generation 3 has this, like, a bigger energy about it than the previous two generations, and it's a little bit more, like, kaiju. It's a little bit more uh, ambitious, and... Uh, Peso yeah. really brings that out in the cipher. And this was one of those ones where that 
horn melody uh from the theme just worked immediately like yeah. we dropped it in we're like ah, you know what that actually sounds good <laughs> like the the previous two generations we were having like trouble like settling on like how we want to do it we just kind of dropped it in i'll be like oh no that works cool yeah I, first Next. thing i heard yeah. I, I felt that immediately yeah. it, it really clicks uh, i forgot to mention the game boy advance spinning into frame with all the nicks and scratches on it that awoke in my third eye i mean th- this is like <laughs> yeah I, f- I feel like i've been seen you know <laughs> like, like this is my all, all thing. this like, i love this <laughs> all, all the all this stuff is completely originally uh not mod like uh they installed models but uh the textures the 3d motions completely original it's not like we took an asset and added the screen to it like literally there was a model of a game boy uh the editor threw on the textures the screens the motion graphics all of that stuff using uh 3d software yeah let's jump into gen 4 fourth gen out of sino y'all when i copy the style but wasn't ditto shell to his back i ain't talking on my dillo if i ever black i turn this dame to a widow turt wig leave you in a dirt kid with your wig in the earth split out of service in your era talk terror but more terror when i'm on terror you're not earth you're not better Chim char, I believe you chump char. You ain't coming with that flame, then you getting out bar. I go eight with the flame, no one eight in the game. That was fire off top. What I think is insane. You can't ride my way. I be the nicest, king of the ocean. My crown be a triton. Yeah, I see your girl think I'm cute with it. She can slide, catch a vibes in the juice with it. All right, that was Dizzy Eight. Cam, what do you think about that verse? I really like he kind of went in and provided a big flow switch in the beginning and we actually changed the drum pattern. That's the first time you'll see the drum pattern actually switch in this cipher to fit more of his kind of almost feels like it's a little off beat. But, uh, you know, like he purposely will like slide a little bit off the beat and then land back on the correct hit and does those little kind of intentional uh, flow skips that he does and so with that flow changing the drum pattern really accentuated it allowing like his second half to kind of just let the normal beat ride out instead of the first half which has the more epic uh orchestral elements uh and yeah more cool references i really like the sonics of his verse but you know like he does the torterra the chimp char he got the king of the ocean my crown is a triton i think that the way that he carries himself and this is part of his personality, but it really meshes well with the concept of Generation 4, it feels like it's just a little bit heavier. Like, there's a lot more weight behind it, and you you get that when he's going just a little bit off the beat. It sounds like he's trying to pull something with him, and that thing that he's pulling is is the weight of the story of Generation 4 and how much bigger everything got and how, how much the world expanded. I mean, we're talking about, like, the Earth turtle you know we're talking about chinese mythology you know triton god yeah, of yeah. the ocean you know you're, you're getting that in his gravel yeah. and the way that he's delivering the flow uh, so that's a reference mm-hmm. in itself even though it's not verbal um really like that and if, my yeah. favorite line in this he says i go ape with a flame no one ate in the game it's fire off the top what i think is insane and fire off the top of course infern apes head is on fire yeah. literally so every like i told people hey don't just go say like oh i spit fire like i'm charizard because all of them do fire, but this is a very specific, like, oh, fire off the top, freestyles, dope. That's a, you know, not the craziest bar ever written, but it works so well specifically for the Infernape line that, you know, it almost would have been sacrilegious if he didn't say it. What do you think? You ready for Gen 5? Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Okay, I'm ballin' like a pig knight. Every bar is gas too heated. Believe it, I'm going ham, you beef, and it's gonna end up in a fist fight. Another firefighter, but slightly brighter. My stuff is tired of all these liars that ain't superior to this guy. I said, what are you doing? These Gen 5 starters go stupid. The rest of y'all, I get the invite. So when I move with the crew, don't get mad. You can't do what I do. Look, check it out. First off, I'm a boss, and I mean that. Hammer arm in the glove where I keep that. No belts in the whip, but I beat straps. So you better buckle up now for that heat crash. I'm a samurai. Holes, give me Dome when I fall, you a goldfish. A ball in a home to the goats, we the code. It's the beast and it's over. You don't want none with the three from you, Nova. All right, I'm just going to say, I yeah. think GE has the best verse on this cipher. It's uh, it's hit him and Shizzy are my personal two favorites. Yeah, this was one of the first verses I got back. Went absolutely crazy. And like a lot of people agree, I see in the comment section, like, yeah, GE was rapping on this one, man. And like from the rhyme schemes to the, like, just even like that section of just like, he has the whole like triple entendre between 
the like the Embor hammer arm uh, heat crash stuff like that, but also a reference to like he's also doing a double entendre between a gun and a car like at the same time. The amount of work in the writing, but also the flow is just incredible. Like he his delivery is great, and so you can not catch any of this stuff and still listen to this and be like he's spazzing out. I do want to say one thing with the beat is that this was one of those ones where the beat is obviously like so different from the original because it, this probably has the most drastic change to it in terms of the added stems to fit the black and white vi uh, vibe. And, you know, initially it wasn't like the crazy... Uh, GE wrote to a very bare bones beat and it sounds amazing over that. And it almost took me a few listens to really start... Uh, buying into this specific beat because I was like god I don't I don't know if it works but the more I listen to it just the more it adds this sense of scale to what he's saying especially halfway through that verse yeah I was gonna say in, the, in our first you know take of this cypher uh the, the beat had no piano in it and GE was just going ham and I thought that there was actually like a comical tone to his verse especially with the Asha, what are you doing? Like, I love that line. And that's GE. Yeah. I mean, he's the punchline king. Like, he's not afraid to be funny and then go right back into being yeah. hard and threatening, you know? But the yeah, piano, yeah. it's just so good, you know? And I think it's I think it's a nice juxtaposition. Yeah, it really just gave that a sense of scale to it as well. Because, yeah, it was a very tongue-in-cheek verse. Like, it still goes tough, and uh, his delivery is dope. But it was, like, you know, tongue-in-cheek, kind of just like... What are you doing? But now he's like saying it with like a smile, but also it's like, I'm smiling because I know if you mess with me, you are, I am obliterating you. It's almost, it's almost villainous, you know? And, and yeah, yeah. when we're talking about Getsis and N, I mean, that's, that's villainous yeah, right this there. Jen. Yeah. And so I wouldn't have, his verse was so good. I wouldn't have committed to the sound if I didn't legitimately think it just adds that one extra element. And so, like, I didn't want to fumble on this verse because it was one of those verses that's just so dope. All right, that goes right into me, Generation 6. Let's see how I match up to everybody else here. Bonjour, hello, whoever's keeping score. Get the kids who came from Mr. Sycamore. Couldn't be Sycamore. Whether it's a knight, a magician, or a ninja, you're getting deep six by the team screaming, This is war. Meddling with ultimate weapons, folks are surrendering the French race. Can't defend you, can against the fennec, can you best pray? 3D phase, making 4D plays in this game like a chess pin, checkmate. Lick spitting like a Greninja with the swiftness. Coming in quick with this ninjutsu, making a princess want to kiss this. Kicking it with that ass guy, you don't need to ask why. My brazen axe or a thorn in your backside. Check Snort, I'll tell your spine with this type of power. Del Fox, your ears will light like a fire flower by the side of body, my heart, fighting side dark. Rising higher than the Eiffel Tower in your final hour. Hello. I know my verse inside and out, and I've listened to it one trillion times, and it, it gets to a point where you're just so in your head about it that you don't even know if it's good or bad anymore. Uh, so I'll ask Cam, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I think this added, again, like, what's so great about this cipher is I don't think there's any weak verses, and so many of them are so diverse, and what you added was this kind of element. You know, I made a joke tweet of, like, the intellectual verse where like you do a lot more in terms of like the speed and the flow changes but also like what you're saying in terms of the references that you're making go a layer or two deeper than the average person on the ciphers it's a very specific style so some people might say oh, okay like you maybe he was doing too much but a lot of times you're going to get matt for you had the best verse comments because people appreciate that level of both effort skill and knowledge that's on display with this type of verse and i think the instrumentation works very well especially when you start doing your little war chant stuff and bringing in the other vocal layers that is actually a uh it is an xy theme but we changed one note to give it a little bit more intimidating but that dun 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 like that's a uh that was billy jean what i just did but uh <laughs> there there that that was a <laughs> that is a pokemon theme that uh glitch city remixed and then we changed the highest note to be a little bit lower so it gives off a more intimidating war march feel uh to not clash with the way you were rapping there. And then as you start going into the more fun, lick spitting like a Greninja with the, the sickness, like that uh, that type of flow, one, is just dope. I, it's one of my favorite flows I've seen from you. 
and just bringing it into the lighter string violin of the main theme there is kind of like, like all right, I did the serious, like, you know, deep voice thing. Now let me just go have a little fun with, like, I'm the best. Like, uh, I'm a ninja. I'm going to kiss a princess. Like, now, now, now you're just having fun with it, and I think it adds a lot with the brighter strings during that section. Yeah, when you give me this idea, I remember I was watching a movie when you texted me that I was going to be Kalos, and I just stopped watching it and just started writing things down because <laughs> I just couldn't yeah, get it out yeah. of my head. I was so excited um, just to, to try out a generation I've never tried before. And uh, I started off with a joke, and I don't know if you remember this or not, but when you told me that you were going to be Professor Sycamore in the Professor Cipher, I said to you, are yeah. you going to say that there's nobody sicker more than Sycamore? And you were like, Haha. and I said, I said, I said, no, that's, <laughs> I'm not saying that. That's a you line, bro. That's not a Cam Steady line. That is a Matt Forio line. It, 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 I'm, I'm much happier that it came out of your mouth yeah. than mine because, <laughs> like, it, you, it, it, it sells for you much better than if I was trying to say that. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that, like, literally by complete coincidence, you happen to have the opportunity to deliver that line like on the very next cipher i actually commented it on the professor cipher when you uploaded it yep obviously i'm keeping that rhyme scheme but i'm also trying to hit home on a certain theme or a motif for the starters as a trio because that's the unique mm -hmm. thing about this is that we're, we are representing three different characters or if you want to go as far as say nine different characters uh generation six is one of the first generations to really give a a true uh, undeniable consistent theme across the three starters, which are RPG classes, Knight, Magician, Ninja. And so there's a nice rhyme scheme opportunity with Sycamore, Sycamore, Magician, or Ninja, Yor. And then, of course, what's Kalos all about? This is war, right? There was a huge war back in the day in that game, and it's central to the plot. It's like a thesis statement almost. Like, you, you get that conclusive thought right there, and then people say, mm, okay, so that's like a complete thought. Now let's move on to the next thing, right? And then... Mm -hmm. I go into this flow talking about um, talking about you know, the ultimate weapon from Kalos and how that was instrumental to the plot as well. I wanted to make reference to what's new in this generation, that being that everything's 3D for the first time. So that's something unique that the later generations can say, but they can't claim as their own, like Kalos can. Yeah. So it's 3D faves yeah. making 4D plays, like, like you're playing 4D chess, like you have a big brain, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like that bar a lot. Thank you. And it's like, that was one of the first things I thought of. And there's these little pockets in the verse where you know you want to place these uh, punchlines that people are going to be expecting one there. And if they don't hear it, then they just kind of deflate a little bit. And so I'm trying to make sure that those moments hit uh, by putting some of the better punchlines there. With, with Greninja, yep. it's actually ironic or it was actually a challenge for me because I have represented Greninja before in a rap battle on your channel versus Charizard. Yeah, and I, yeah. I feel like I used up so many of the best Greninja references there. And so I thought instead of maybe making another reference to Ash Greninja or his water shurikens, then how about I just uh, embody Greninja and personify him by rapping really fast. So lick spitting, of course, licks like when you're punching somebody, you get your licks in, um, but also his tongue scarf. Uh, Swift is a Pokemon move. Ninjutsu is Greninja's uh, art form. Um, making a princess want to kiss this. I want to be clear about this reference that it's, uh, uh, of course, a reference to the folklore yeah. of uh, if you, uh, if a princess kisses a frog, then he becomes mm -hmm. a prince, you know. So, of course, Greninja is a frog. But it's really, at the end of the day, is a reference to how Serena kisses Ash at the end of the XYZ anime. And so, oh. um, be because of the fact that Ash and Greninja are so closely linked, uh, on a, a symbiotic level at this point it's almost like serena wanted to kiss greninja as much as she wanted to kiss ash or at least greninja is claiming that in this instance so that leads right into the next line kicking uh -huh. it with that ash guy you know so x y right my brazen axe or a thorn in your backside um i think this is a little it's it's a niche reference for sure but uh specifically mm -hmm. the the character brazen who is fennekin's evolution uh, carries a stick on its tail yep. and you could yep. call that a thorn in your backside of course having a thorn in your side is it is an idiom for when somebody's bothering you or being an annoyance and so my yeah. brazen axe right if you do a quick search for brazen spelled with a z bold and without shame 
my brazen acts yeah. are an annoyance to you because I'm just so I'm just so good. At the very end here, I wanted to give some appreciation to Chestnut and Del Fox who really get overshadowed by Greninja, let's be honest. And of course their names yeah. rhyme if you say them the right way. So I created these moments of emphasis in the rap. Chestnut, I'll tear your spine with this type of power. Del Fox, your ears are light like a fire flower. So there's a reference in each of those lines, right? You have Chestnut is gonna tear your spine, right? Think about spine. If you look up Chestnut on uh, Bulbapedia, you're going to see that he is classified as the spiny armor Pokemon. So he's going to break your spine. And my raps are going to light your ears on fire uh, like a fire flower. because It's like a Mario reference, rhymes with Eiffel Tower. And the ears look like almost flowers like blossoming out of her ear, uh, out of her ears. By the sound of body, mind, heart, fighting side dark. So this is a callback mm -hmm. to the beginning of the verse where I uh, referenced the theme of the starters. Right, you have a uh, night magician ninja, and now you have body, mind, heart, fighting side dark. So not only does that rhyme, but they're also uh, one to one. Body represents fighting, chestnuts, secondary type. Mind represents psychic, Delphox is secondary type, and heart represents darkness, uh, Greninja secondary type. And mm -hmm. they're all rising higher than the Eiffel Tower in your final hour. So that whole end part is influenced by the word Eiffel Tower. So if you deconstruct it, you can see that that's where all the rest of the rhymes stem from. But if you also notice, the word Eiffel Tower is not the last word in the verse. And I did that intentionally because I know what's coming next. <laughs> Aloha to the Alola. Water on my body, no pre-marina folder. Leave him lean in the chopper, hit like a Larry, cleave him in center roar, keep the heater on my waistband, spin it through his block and finna turn it to a wasteland. He's thicker than a spray tan. My rifle got the long reach. I take him in a ghost and he floating like a Rabombi. Put a dot up on his face and he bluer than a Briambi. All me. Hey, and I'm stacking all my star chips. Green on my mind, got me feeling like a Dartrix. I've been on the way for a minute, I ain't stopping till I'm finished. Ice beaming on my wrist from the Arctic. Hey, this is Cypher, don't be asking where the chorus at. I've been evolving the fire, feel like a Tora cat. And I've been eyeing the throne, yeah, we're horse at. Yeah, I got my head up where the sore at. Did Aloha to the Alola get uh, old here, or did it deliver again? I think this was a good kind of potential conclusion to the catchphrase. Who knows how it'll be brought back in future ciphers, if it will, and stuff like that. And I never, I never, t this was the first time I just told, because I was doing the t-shirts, like, I did not tell Mir Blackwell to do it. I did not tell Breton to do it. And obviously, Maguire just opened it as a normal lyric. So, uh, Breton and Mir just completely continued it off their own. Because the thing is, I don't tell people to say it. So, like, Mix Williams, uh, Sailor, and Peso, when they represented Gen 7, never said it. Uh, because, again, it wasn't like some requirement I was forcing down people's throats. This was the one time I was like, I'm selling the t-shirts. Say the, say the thing. Say the funny thing. If people can find clever ways, I'd say we can continue it. After he says it, he kind of just ch flips the script on you. You know, he changes the rhyme scheme and he kind of goes off the rails a little bit. He's, it's like you, you don't know which way he's coming at you. He's going in all different directions. And then he brings it back uh, when he finishes that stanza by saying, uh, bluer than a Briambi on me. Like, I think that rhyme scheme really hits at that point. And the Dark Tricks line is so fun the way that he delivers it, and that's just getting in my head a lot, too. He referenced all of the middle stages, which is crazy, because it's, you know, like, barely anybody referenced any form of middle stages throughout this entire cipher, so... Uh, and I, I think I should make a note that uh, Horus is an ancient Egyptian deity who has the head of an owl. That's where he's uh, getting that last two lines from. He's eyeing the throne, reference to the Sidui. He's got his head up where yep. the Sora at. Sora means sky, so he's got his head up in the clouds. Um, yep. I like to think it's just a Kingdom Hearts reference. But <laughs> yeah, um, it could be. It's not very Pokemon-centric in, immediately in your face, but it does tie back to uh, Rowlet and Decidueye. And I think that the editor really uh, helped to sell that, even if he didn't quite get it on the first listen.
I mean, I mean, disrupt the scene, construct your team, choose between a bunch of beasts, enough to beat any mon in this blood spot of rock, paper, scissors, pick an overgrown ape that can stick to the rhythm, a rampant rabbit that can kick through your innards, or a smug new to vote from a depressed lizard out in Galar, can't catch them all anymore, gotta catch off, find me in the water type gym where the gal are, time to act, call it dynamax, in the race, balls in the face, and she fine with that, tap that drum like a real boom playing, Intellion fingers get the waterworks spraying, ah, gen 8, tell them we set the pace when I step in the gym, make and respect the game. See speedy-eyed redders can't compete when I pop off. My starters will end, yeah, so you better hop off. So this verse is, is quite more uh, suggestive than it might seem. Yeah, yeah, no, things seem to be going well over there. Like <laughs> you say, Galar, where the gal are, you know, where where the where the women at, he's saying. <laughs> and uh, he went crazy. He, he was saying something. I have to say, there is an iconic line in here that I think that needs to be pointed out. Um, and I just, I think this is so funny. He says, out in Galar, can't catch them all anymore, gotta catch half. <laughs> like, yeah. But, that is so yeah, funny. Which, like, it's self-deprecating, yeah. and it's like a reference to that region and that, that period of time and the, th that that moment, you know? Like, it, yeah. it's so funny. <laughs> the genius document that we're looking at uh, fumbled a lot of the opener lines because uh, we didn't have the lyrics on screen for the opening line, so he doesn't say that he is mean. He's saying, how you mean, like, how you mean. Definitely. He's not going, I am mean, I am mean. <laughs> it's that Galar dialect. It's, it's, he's dope, he went crazy. I always get someone with an accent to do the Gen 8. Uh, and uh, with his flow, I'm a, I'm a big Shadow fan. I have Cursey on my workout playlist. I love his style so much, and... Uh, his ability to use his accent to say things like, oh, he doesn't say catch half. He says, gotta cut, yeah, off. cut off. And the, uh, he's like, I could stick to the rhythm. Like the way he hits the, the rhythm and not rhythm. It's like, it's so much cooler when he says it than when I say it because just the voice and the accent gives it that, that swag that just non existed in my accent. That's what's so cool about the diversity of, of rappers that you have here is that people can even use different words in different rhyme schemes that others just can't yeah. pull off, you know? Yeah. All right, so that that's not the end of the cipher because, of course, uh, Cam Steady has not rapped yet. Where's there's Cam? One, there's one more couple of starters that we just can't forget. And uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people thought that you were going to do the Hisuian Final Evolutions, Cam. I sense some disappointment but I think that you, uh, I think you pulled through and really flipped the script on those who had different expectations and proved why it should yeah. be Pikachu and Eevee. So let's hear how you did. Starter, now this the main course The man adapts, the stats meets The team needs the type to please I be nice and sleep green Step into the car, see them all You sees me Never gonna fall, you won't receive these EVs, y'all Need to level up to above the flow While I'm bowing on the spot Dripping in the stones, let's go Pull up on the foe, you don't want the damage If you try to touch me, I'ma paralyze you from the static I'm an addict when it comes to fire flare on Got the heat went in the league Like the name's LeBron Right, you, they just riding on the wave He's on the face, on the box Your favorite morning, that's that God, I love that part where you change the flow and you say, uh, yeah, yeah, you need to level up to have the flow. And it, it's like, I don't know. I mean, you, you just awoken the little kid in me in that part. You know, it's, just, yeah. it's so fun. When I, when I do these ciphers, I kind of rap in like the more video game rap battles tone of like, you know, I'm purposely putting on a little bit more of a goofy high energy delivery that I wouldn't normally do on like a song song, which is fine because I get to really kind of just like, you know, I, I liken these ciphers more so to musical theater than a traditional rap cipher. So I kind of get to play the character a little more than just uh, my normal songs. And so, yeah, like it's very much like that character, but I still draw from like Vince Staples with that, uh, with the da 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 to wama, ha da ba ta ha da da to like there's a, uh, you can see these different hip hop inspirations even when I'm doing the more goofy musical theater delivery that I do on some of these ciphers. You've rapped as you know Pikachu and Eevee with a rap battle on your channel before. That's not the first time you've represented Generation One either. So it's like, how, what do I say that's different this time? And I I did and I did Eevee on the Eevee cipher. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people asked about the the Legends Arceus 
guys and it's just like it's it's just the same pokemon at the end of the day like they have a they have a new move and a new type in order to find inspiration on how to make it different from your previous iterations of these characters i think that i i see that you're you know relying on these double rhymes especially in the beginning where you're kind of letting that pioneer and and drive the the verse and see where it takes you you know you say mascot rat and you're going with that double rhyme scheme the whole time and then you go team needs leave mm -hmm. green and then you end with that really cool reference to EVs, which are uh, effort values that you would otherwise gain when you defeat an enemy. And I think that that's, that's how you make it unique. You know, you take it in a different direction, even though you have the same starting point. Yeah, throwing in a few, like, for, like the LeBron bar and the, oh, you're surfing on the way, like the surfing Raichu reference. And yeah, like the EVs double and stuff like that, like thinking of a couple of those references that I know I haven't made yet. Uh, really drove how this verse kind of came together, and you know, like the stuff like, oh, I did an EV cipher, and I didn't rep, I didn't reference Pokemon Coliseum or XD Gale of Darkness in that entire cipher. And they're the starters. Dude, those are the original EV games, you know. Not even let's. I do a little let's go, like literally, I just say let's go. But those games are like so iconic, and we kind of, you know, they're kind of brushed by in the greater Pokemon lexicon. But uh, people forget those are the EV games. I'm glad people are really liking this cipher. It's been wildly successful. I'm very happy with that. Uh, uh, very grateful for the lineup of guys who all agreed to do this. Uh, lots of dudes that I'm a fan of agree to jump on these, so I'm very grateful. I'm grateful for Matt Forio for always tapping in because every time a Matt Forio verse happens, there's going to be a hundred people saying, "Oh, Matt Matt Forio was the best verse." Hey, I'm grateful for you too. It's always an honor to be a part of these projects that you do. It, 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 I love being able to exercise my creative freedom but above all i'm just grateful for your friendship mm -hmm. of course at the end of the day because oh thank these you these are brother. just so much fun to do with you yeah so shout out to everybody rapping on this one uh the entire lineup i appreciate that shout out to freshy for putting an hour shout out to glitch who got more hands-on with this one and started jumping into the production calls and being able to make live adjustments rather than just sending stuff over it really was a group effort shout out to sleepless who literally we spent this video came out six hours late because we did not sleep the night before trying to finish it and i am grateful for you guys for watching and buying alola to the aloha to the alola shirts available now only less than 200 left so pick yours up Cam, before we go, I had to do my uh, journalistic um, job and ask, what's the next one going to be now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I can like plan a little bit ahead of time, but this one felt like a big one. And I don't know if I want to do another Pokemon one, if I want to do that. But I think the Cyphers, you're going to see them get a little bit more spread apart uh, with a couple more normal songs in between so that I can spend more time you know, making them big event drops rather than just something that happens every single month. So they're not, it's not going to be like that much of a big gap in between them compared to what they are already, but just a little more time into the development. So less all nighters and more quality work on time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today on this discussion. I hope everybody else enjoyed it as well. If you're looking for mm -hmm. some more content from any of the rappers that you saw on this cipher, make sure you check out their channels. There's an endless supply of videos for you to dig into. Uh, and also stay tuned to this channel. I have the Homophones Rap Part 2 coming out very soon. And also more collaborations with folks like Cam making some video game rap songs. So on that note, I'm Matt Forio, and that's all for you today.